Hi everyone, this is Balash from Racing Brick. LEGO Technic sets come in different waves. You could already see the January 2023 sets on this channel. Now it's time to review everything that comes in March. Here are the four boxes, and we will start with the biggest one. This is the 42154 GT. It's an 18 plus set with the usual design. You can see the dark blue car on a black background with all the different logos around it. On the back of the box there's the rear of the car, the dimensions in the bottom row, some data about the real one, a group photo and another one of the original 4GT. Let's open the box. The set has 1466 pieces, the price is 120 euros or dollars and it will be available from the 1st of March. Oh boy, this sticker sheet really suffered in this box and even the manual has some battle scars. Why couldn't they put them in an envelope? I mean, this really sets the mood even before we start building the set. Come on Lego, this is really something you could fix easily. There are 11 numbered bags in the set with 5 building phases, an unnumbered one with the rims and the bigger frames, 4 tires, the poor sticker sheet and the manual. We get a nice comparison photo with the real car here, some details of the Lego build, then about the 2022 Ford GT, a little history lesson about the generations of this model, and a few words from Milan Reindl, the designer of the model. Too bad his name is spelled wrong here, that one should be an L at the end. I know it has nothing to do with the model itself, but this is a rookie mistake I found instantly. Quality control has a lot of work to do at several LEGO departments. I had a chance to talk to Milan about the model and he shared some great insights, I will share all the information from that interview in this video. He was very passionate about this set as the GT40 Mark IV is his favorite car of all time. Here is the part list of the set if you are interested, now let's start building. We begin with the rear axle and the good old differential, then comes this brand new double CV joint piece, I don't know yet the official name. This is a solution for a very specific problem, the scale and more precisely the width of the car and the 5 module long wishbone setup that is required for that. As you see, these old CV joints wouldn't fit as they are one module longer together, so this new part was necessary. The new piece does not seem to be as versatile as these pieces here, where you can extend the length by putting longer axles in between, but we will see. It's interesting to find a white half bush in a Technic set, last time it happened was 19 years ago if I'm not mistaken. This one is even funnier, I mentioned the white half pin in my recent stunts video, as it never appeared in a Technic set before, well, the time has finally come. And we can see the transparent engine blocks appearing again after the BMW motorbike and the Batmobile. This might not be a realistic representation according to some, but Milan is a huge fan of these and he wanted to use them because it makes the inner workings of the engine more visible and people at Ford were also happy with this solution. Yet another recolor you will really like. We had the green version in the Monster Jam Dragon, now the 7 module long flip flop beam is available in a more versatile dark bluish grey color. We are adding some very specific complex structures to the build, this one will be part of the hand of god steering setup for sure. Time to add the shock absorbers, now we get the ones with hard spring in black. According to Milan these are only recolors and should have the same stiffness as before, interestingly the coil setup has changed in the past 1-2 years for the hard ones. Previously we had this setup that Brickling calls the one with tight coils in the middle and now this one with tight coils at the end. These are listed as alternate items for a few recent sets, as I have early samples they all still have the old variation, but I guess now they are sold with the new ones. Anyway, I think we will see this setup going forward, according to my very non-scientific test their performance is quite similar, it is very difficult to define an exact endpoint and power. If you made better measurements, please let me know in the comments. Things get quite crowded back here, we connected the differential to the fake engine, but there's a mechanism here that will control the rear wing I guess. This glow in the dark rod won't be really visible when the car is finished, but it was available to use, so Milan thought it's a nice piece to add. Here we are at the end of phase 1. We begin phase 2, and here's this rather new piece that appeared this year in the dump truck, where it was required for the steering setup. The assembly is quite specific and requires attention, now we realize that we are building the front axle. Here comes the steering rack and the gears, and as you can see things got pretty dense around here. Time to attach it to the rest of the build. We continue building some very specific assemblies, full attention is certainly required as the manual might be tricky. Here due to the perspective you might think that grey piece is connected somehow to the pinhole on the black album, but as you see in reality it is not. And it does not stop here. When you put the assembly in place, 
You are supposed to be able to push the grey pin with Bosch in the whole of the white connector piece, but they don't line up. The whole thing is very wobbly as the front and rear sections are not connected yet, but to be able to do that you need to lift the whole thing up, push that rear mechanism all the way down and then the pieces will line up. I wish this was explained better in the instructions. We had the bases of the door mechanism that have quite a complex geometry on their own. The first sticker pieces are for the dashboard and here's the steering wheel that is not connected to the wheels unfortunately. Here are the seats, don't try to push that pin with pinhole fully in place as it won't work, that's by design. We finally arrived to the point when the big side frames are attached and I think it could have been done differently. We are at step 203 and the front and rear sections were joined in step 126. Since that step, only that steering cross axle connected the two sections, making the handling of the model very inconvenient as they can separate very easily. Actually, nothing required us to join those two sections at that point, so it could have been much better to add the dashboard, the seats and everything else to the two assemblies separately and then join them together now right before the big frames are added. Make sure to have that blue pin attached properly to the frame by the way as that won't be trivial, the geometry you see there is quite impressive. Here is the build at half time, you can see already how the mechanism of the rear wing works with that lever and also most of the hand of god steering. There's also one thing I noticed, the surprisingly unified color scheme of the whole chassis. There's no trace of the usual colorful pieces that most of you call color vomit. We have a nice and pleasant palette of pieces. Milan's focus was mostly on the reusability of all parts for potential alternate models for example, but I think everyone will like this approach for one reason or another. Here's phase 3 and we start to add the body elements. There are tons of pieces that are new in dark blue. The dark blue white racing stripe color combination was specifically requested by Ford and they also wanted to see as much striping being brick built as possible. We have the A pillars and the hand of god steering knob in place, then comes the rear section that has a nice printed GT tile, then the diffuser with a lot of small panel fairings and the system assembly with a substantial amount of stickers. We start to build the iconic teardrop shape of the cockpit and the rear section. Just look how this assembly is carefully designed to fit into that space and connect firmly on both ends. Here's one of the new 11 module wide wheel arch elements with the surrounding pieces, including hidden system bricks here and there, and once you line it up properly, it's a perfect fit. Then comes one of the flying buttresses, then the same assemblies go to the other side, and the final thing to build from phase 3 is the rear spoiler. In phase 4 we start covering the front end, then comes the other new 11 module wide wheel arch piece with the curved top. These new elements will also appear on the new firefighter aircraft, but this time they are transparent and printed. They are attached to this clever assembly with funky angles that still work somehow and the whole thing is surprisingly solid. System studs being attached to Technic pinholes, then the whole thing goes in place. This connection adds extra stability and then comes the grill. Here's the assembly to finish the hood, then we need to add two of these tricky things with the flex axles to complete the front end and it is time to open the last bag. This one has the engine cover with some accents made of system bricks. The last challenge is to build the doors, it begins with some seemingly random pieces loosely attached to each other, but then everything goes in place and we have this thing full of quirky angles, it looks super cool once it is attached to the body. All we have to do is to add the wheels and the build is finished. So, here is our finished 4 GT in its full glory. I think this color scheme looks great on the car, I totally understand why Ford wanted to have it. Panels flow nicely everywhere with fewer gaps than usual, the appearance of the new smaller panel fairings really help with the body shaping. The iconic teardrop shape is clearly visible from the top, we can respect how the panels of the door continue seamlessly towards the rear with that iconic tunnel under the flying buttresses. The door mechanism works very nicely, this was one of the biggest challenges of the model to solve and the close cooperation of experienced Technic designers was necessary to solve it. It still does not open as wide or as high as Milan would prefer, but I think they did a respectable job. We have an easy to use hand of god steering knob on the roof that can be removed for display. A part of the hood can be opened and also the engine cover at the rear. The fake engine is visibly driven by the differential and the pistons can be easily observed thanks to the transparent engine block pieces. The rear wing is operated by the lever in the cabin and we can also adjust it manually to simulate the air brake. We have independent suspension at the front and at the back as well. The model received some complaints after the reveal for the big gaps between the wheel arches and the wheels, 
Well, if you want to noticeable suspension travel, then there's a gap required. There's no current wheel rim combination in the lineup that would have a better fit. Theoretically, these ones would fit in the wheel arch, but they're too wide and proportionally also too big compared to the real car. About the scale, I think you only realize how small it is if you put it next to some previous 110 scale cars like the Ferrari 488 or the Porsche, it looks super tiny. It is actually closer to the Ford Raptor, which is about 113 scale. 112 wasn't a designer decision by the way, it was defined by the marketing and creative lead team. As Milan said, the complex shaping of the car didn't really work in this smaller scale, but they didn't want to go bigger for some reason, so that was the compromise made. I think the fact that the functions that we could find in these bigger models, and actually even more with the adjustable rear spoiler, could be squeezed in a car of this size is truly remarkable. There are of course things to complain about, the wheel arch profiles don't really match, headlights neither, proportions are somewhat off looking from the side, but all these are limitations of the material itself and it is not a diecast model after all. The building experience is quite challenging, it teaches you a lot about the process of body sculpting with technical elements. I know some people would look for a gearbox or anything mechanical inside, but don't forget that we did get less than this in even bigger branded car models previously. Considering the price point of all these cars you can see here, I think we get a lot of experience and look for our money. There's a whole world of difference if we compare it to Dom's Dodge Charger from a building complexity perspective. It's a shame the 18 plus label made the previous age rating pretty much useless in the Technic world, but as the Porsche RSR was a 10 plus set, I would easily add the 14 plus label for this one, and I would definitely recommend it to anyone who's looking for a nice and challenging Technic building experience, focusing more on the styling, but still having a decent amount of functionality. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments folks, if you like this video then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe with notifications as we have all these technique reviews coming very soon and even more of course. See you next time, bye bye.